on this little project called Creature Features. This, of course, is my favorite creature, at least one of my top ones. This is a what you call a reticulated python. And this is one of those snakes that gets gigantic. But then again, they don't all get gigantic. We have dwarf reticulated pythons, and mainlands is what we normally consider them. There's one called super dwarfs. They're the smallest of form. They run approximately six to eight feet, typically in the wild, and uh, very seldom get much bigger in captivity. Maybe somewhere between eight and ten would be really a big one. Of course, when you're talking about mainland, you're talking about the mainland ones that are usually typically larger than the island forms, and they can get upward of 25 feet. This, this girl's trying to hang on to me pretty good. And uh, they can get upward of 25 feet, weigh 350 pounds. Uh, this here is actually what we call a morph. And this is a tiger anthrax. And uh, what that is means is there's basically, when you talk about snakes in general, and you talk about morphs, that means it's basically a type of snake that was found in the wild that had a different coloration than normal. This girl's big. She actually weighs probably, see I don't even have to, like, you see this? There's multiple uses for reticulated pythons. You can go to the gym. <laughs> it's called a uh, tribe. It's, it, uh, we got all kinds of ideas here, you know, medieval workout. But anyway, this is one of the things we like a lot. Obviously, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can learn a ton about retics because it's one of our major staples that we do. We breed, uh, we bred literally hundreds of colorations and uh, they're very interesting. Uh, this one here is a girl and she's just about breeding size for a mainland. Uh, actually we've had mainlands lay eggs smaller than this but the trick to the whole thing is they must have some age on them. Uh, this female here is right about three years old and uh, <clears throat> believe it or not retics are known to be so mean but I just don't know how about all that mean stuff because when they're captive born multi-generation they can be fabulous pets. Now, if you're a seven-year-old, I would not recommend buying a reticulated python. Now, if you're a seven-year-old with a dad that wanted a reticulated python and, and you guys work together with it, I don't have a problem with it. And uh, so it's really up to the person and the individual. So anyway, they lay up to many as 30, 30 eggs is probably a good center range. <clears throat> I ate too big of a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but 30 is a good average you know, amount of eggs that a reticulated python will lay. They take about 84 days to hatch. And <clears throat> they're very, they're very uh, amazing when the respects that they, they're, you know, like a lot of snakes, like a colubrid, will lay their eggs in a you know, mound somewhere underground, lay the eggs and leave. But a reticulated python, or as far as that goes, pythons in general, will actually maternally incubate the eggs. They'll wrap around the eggs. And uh, the amazing part is a python can actually raise its temperature up and down, which is, you know, they're cold-blooded. We're supposed to say, oh, they're cold-blooded, they can't change their temperature. But they actually can. They can actually raise their temperature up like one or two degrees and actually cool them down. So what they do is they take their body, wrap it around, and they take their muscles and, and create some heat. And, of course, the part that they really cool is when they coil around them, they don't need all the heavy humidity that you would think because they're actually putting them inside of a closed, closed, when they wrap around they're literally in a waterproof situation where if it rains it sheds off the snake and uh, on the likewise if it's too dry they can close them in and raise the humidity that way. So there's a lot to learn about a python, they're amazing. And uh, <clears throat> we'll hopefully learn a lot from this creature feature and if you would like can you leave a comment down the bottom on things you'd like to learn about and a lot of questions that obviously I can't tell you everything in just a few minutes and this is a really long video even so put your questions down below and we'll do our best to make sure to get some answers and uh, hope you're enjoying our creature features